Okay, I don't know what video I'm on anymore because I've honestly taken so many. Alright, basically, car is not starting anymore. Uh, I'm gotten mixed comments on the forums are telling me it's an electrical problem between my ignition switch and the starter. Somewhere in that range, I've got a problem with the uh, electrical, they're saying. But, talking with mechanics, they're telling me that I have a problem with my fuel system. That something is not regulating the fuel. I'm not getting enough fuel at startup, or I'm not getting any power to the plug. Some, something to do with the fuel system. You know, I'm getting mixed comments on everything, so honestly, I don't know, and I don't care at this point. It's really just, uh... <coughs> It's giving me a migraine now, okay? Anyway, my hard pipes came in the other day. I've went ahead and installed them. I've already noticed that I've done a couple things uh, that I probably should have done in a different order. Like, if you notice on the pipe down there, the third hose goes behind the timing belt shroud and then plugs in right back here. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a pain in the ass to install now because I've went and put it, put the hard pipes on now and I'm having a pain to get them on there. Uh, anyway, but they're on there now and this is what they look like. They look really good compared to what I took off which is down here. Anyways, uh, about the pipes, I'll say they're 20 bucks on eBay. They're 20 bucks for shipping, so you're paying $40 for the pipes. I would not recommend using these hoses. You'll see that I've got uh, one of them hooked up already. That's because I have new ones on order, but I have to have something connected to the engine to use the car. So I'm using their crap hoses. Um, they state on eBay these are silicone. Let me just say right now this is not silicone at all. Um, if it's if they're trying to say it's silicone, I don't know what percentage of silicone they're going to try to sell it off as. What one two percent? I ordered couplers from Z1 Motorsports. Those are silicone. Those you can tell the difference. You can feel the difference. They even look different. I mean, there's just there's a major difference. Uh, the pipes. As I said, the pipes are worth getting, but there's one thing. When you mount the couplers, this is metal to metal, you're going to have to make sure you use some kind of sealant or lubricant on the couplers to make sure it's airtight. These pipes are made in a metal shop. They're straight pipes. They're then heated up and bent, which causes imperfections in the metal and makes the seam imperfect. So if you don't have an airtight seal, you could leak air, which is why I've got two clamps holding it, you know, to make sure it's flush and not just one clamp, and why I've got clamps on there, because that, I'm not trusting that hose, period. Alright, the kit comes with its own filter. Let me just go ahead, okay, see? On the left is my Stillen filter. This is the filter it comes with. Okay, see the density of this filter, see the grooves, that's the density. <clears throat> Not to mention the size, don't forget the size. Don't use this filter either, the airflow, it'll actually restrict your airflow about as much as a stock air filter. So don't use the hoses, don't use the stock air filter, but the pipes, it's worth it just for the pipes. Uh, on this I've spent 20 for the pipes, 20 for shipping, so 40. Then the couplers were $10 a piece, so that's 40 there, $10 for shipping, 50. So I'm up to $90 now just for the replacing of the pipes. These here are 60 a piece, so not bad. It's coming out about the same. The difference is I'm going to have increased horsepower and less restricted airflow in the long run. Uh, anyway. Uh, this is the box that came in. 
little big, you think, for what it, the parts it came with. Um, it actually disappeared for three days en route. Uh, UPS has no idea where it went. It left California one day at midnight and just for three days didn't appear on the tracking charts. It just, poof, gone. Uh, three days later it appeared in Tennessee. They don't know where it came from. They don't know how it got there, but it got to me, so. Very questionable there. Um, thinking, anything else really? Uh, oh, yes, I found some tires for the car. Uh, 205-55-16. They're thinner. The uh, sidewall from, from left to right is going to be thinner so the you're not going to have as much traction but the overall dimensions of the tire the height of the tire is a difference of a tenth of an inch so I'll probably be getting two of those for the front because these are still the old tires they weren't as bad as the rears which I had to replace but these still need to go they're pretty bad uh, anyways hard pipes installed I'm going to be replacing the fuel lines eventually. Pretty much, uh, this thing, if you get it, I'm, I'm going to state again, it's worth getting for your car if you have a naturally aspirated 300ZX. I'm just going to state this and stress it. It's a pain in the ass to install. These are not as simple as that there where you just slip them on and, and screw the clamps down. These are made to flush mount. You have to have couplers because it's metal to metal. And then on top of that, you got to clamp them down. And it's you don't have any room to work in this car. See all these wires, all these hoses. And uh, over here, it wasn't so bad. It actually went on easier. Over here, I had to remove the horn from its bracket. All those wires were in the way. And then don't forget the AC line. That is really in the way right there. I honestly question removing that because it was a pain to get it in there. You, it's not the fact you can't get the pipes in there, it's the fact you can't get your hands in there to work around the pipes. I mean, uh, my, my hands aren't small. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, so. It's not easy for me to work on this car because, like, areas cramped here, I've got to get a hose replaced right there. I don't know how in hell I'm going to get the hose replaced right there to run to this valve here. I don't know how I'm going to get it replaced because it's either remove all this wiring here, all these hoses, just to get my hand in there. I'm going to have to get under the car to do it. And under the car, honestly, doesn't look any better because I'd have to reach up there. <laughs> So that's fun. Uh, anyways, I changed the settings on my camera, so I got some extra time. I have a 90 to 96 turbo steering wheel for sale. The top of it is wore out, just like the rest of them. They all wear out. Mine's wore out on mine. But to see the difference, I have a four spoke. This is a three spoke, and my cruise control isn't on the steering wheel. I can't use this steering wheel. So it's for sale. If you're interested, contact me. The airbag has been removed. The explosive has been removed. But the steering wheel works. The button works. It's in good condition. The rims I still have for sale. I've had a few people contact me and no one's really followed up. So they're still for sale. Uh, if you're interested in a set of rims, I'm willing to negotiate. I was asking $300. I've dropped it as low as $200 to compensate for shipping. It'll cost $72 to ship these cross country to just about anywhere in the States. So if you're interested in the rims, give me a uh, personal message on YouTube. Just know that uh, one of the rims doesn't hold air. Three of them do. All right, uh, that's really it. Kind of a bunch of miscellaneous stuff lying around. Uh, yeah, that's it. Basically, I'm just upgrading the car while it's sitting here. The car won't start. I can't figure out what's wrong with it. So when I go back to college here in January, I'll probably just put it on a flatbed, lug it to where I'm staying, and put it up on blocks and work on it while I'm in college. It's really all I can do till I can figure out what is causing this problem. So, 
Anyway, later.